Today we're going to be talking about Coulomb's law and also how it relates to electric fields. We're going to talk about the equation, what the constant of proportionality is, and how it also relates to things like radial fields. So let's begin by going through some of the previous things that you might have learned about electric fields, right? And you could also watch a very full video that I did on this right up here. And so let's let's just go through it very simply. Electric fields, they're fields of force and they're represented by field lines. They're field lines of here, you know, it's going outside from the positive charge into the negative charge. The electric field strength, which is denoted by E, and it's basically how strong an electric field is. It's the force divided by unit charge. E is F divided by Q. It's the force per unit positive charge that acts on a stationary charge in the field, right? So if you have a field here and it's, it's caused by this charge and then you have one unit stationary positive charge, then how much force would that positive charge experience? That is what electric field strength is. Now, let's say that you have parallel charged plates. So you have two pieces of metal, two pieces of metal, and they're charged. Let's say, you know, you have wires that are linking you to something that's charging them. This, let's say, is three volts. This is negative three volts. And the distance between them is denoted by D. Now, the potential difference between them is six volts. Right. Well, basically, there's going to be an electric field between these two charged plates. It's going to go like this, obviously, because it's coming outside from the positive uh, plate. So this one, we can also have an equation for that. The field strength, which is E, is denoted by potential difference, which is 6 volts, divided by the separation, the D right here. So that was a recap of what you might have learned before about electric fields. Today, however, we're going to take things one step further, and we're going to talk about electric fields and the Coulomb's law and how we link these two together. Okay, so I changed this one right here. So basically, let's first of all start with talking about point charges. From now on, we can think of electric fields also with something called point charges. And what they are is I've drawn a very bad drawing of it right here because the whole point of a point charge is that it's just so small that it shouldn't even exist. There are electrical charges that are so infinitesimally small that we need not worry about their shapes. So assume that it is so small that it literally does not exist. Because actually sometimes electrons, for example, can cause an electric field. And electrons are infinitesimally small. So usually when we think about an electron floating around, we don't really even think of it as if it's there. It's, it's just, there's just nothing because it's so small. So that's basically what a point charge is. Now, then let's look at Coulomb's law. And you might have heard of gravitational field attractions, gravitational forces, and, and all of that. And actually, Coulomb's law is extremely similar to that as well. Coulomb's law tells us that any two point charges exert an electrical force on each other that is proportional to the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Let's take a look at what that means. So over here, I've, I've drawn a drawing of it. Here are the two point charges. And basically, as Coulomb's law tells us, these two exert a force on each other that is proportional to the product of their charges. So we have to chart, like we have to take their charges, we have to, you know, multiply them together. However, it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. That is the distance. When you square that, it's inversely proportional to that. So these two point charges, according to Newton's third law, exert equal and opposite forces on each other. Now you can see that the forces are both pointing away from each other. This means that they are repelling each other. This also means that they are um, same forces, same charges. So they're either negative negative or positive positive, and hence they exert opposite like repulsive forces. And they're in the opposite direction. It's the same for attractive forces. So let's say you had one that was positive, one that was negative. Then the forces would look a little different. The forces would look like this. They would be attractive. Even then, it is in the exact opposite direction. So this statement will hold, you know, regardless of whether it is an attractive force or repulsive force. It's just true that they will exert equal and opposite forces on each other. And that is with Newton's third law. So 
Right now, it is repulsive, as we can see. Both are in different directions. Now, since the force is directly proportional to the product of their charges, force is directly proportional to Q1, Q2. Force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance, so force is inversely proportional to 1 divided by r squared. And hence, we bring these two together, and then we get this. Force is directly proportional to Q1, Q2 divided by r2. And we can just basically convert this into an equal sign by multiplying a constant in there. Constant is the constant of proportionality. Now, let's talk a little bit about this constant of proportionality. So we actually even can find an exact value for the constant of proportionality. And this is where it becomes very, very interesting. K is 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon, where this epsilon is actually a Greek letter. And it is called the permittivity of free space. And it is approximately 8.85 times 10 to the power of negative 12 in magnitude. And so we're not going to go into what this exactly is, but this is something that you should know, is that the constant proportionality for Coulomb's law is 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon, and that is the permittivity of free space. And so therefore, Coulomb's law can also be represented as f is q1, q2, divided, because we're multiplying this obviously, divided by 4 pi epsilon r squared. And so if you calculated it, if you calculated it this you multiplied it by pi, you multiplied it by 4, and then you divided 1 by the whole thing, right? Then you would get the overall value of this. 9.0 times 10 to the power of 9. That is very easy to memorize because 9 is here and 9 is here. Now, this is obviously approximate. Pi has never-ending decimal digits that go on forever, so it's not going to just end with a 9.0, right? But this is rounding it up, it is approximations. So actually, it can also be written as f is 9.0 times 10 to the negative power of negative 9 times q1, q2 divided by r squared. However, this should only be for rough calculations. As I said before, this is a roundup. So... Uh, when you're searching for something that is more precise, then what I would suggest is to use this value and multiply it by the pi. And obviously, dividing it by r square is very similar to what we went through in the gravitational energies, which is that it just follows the inverse square law. As you know, things spread out, it follows an inverse square law. The distance is basically how um, how much the energy spreads out and, and how much basically kind of becomes lower in intensity and then the the relationship is that it's going to be squared so basically that's a relationship that we've gone through before finally we have a negative and positive charge and obviously they're attractive charges you can see that i put negative signs here now, if we have a positive and negative charge, then the force F is going to be negative. Note how before I drew it as positive forces, right? You know, when there are positive charges together, they're both positive, then it's going to be a, an, a, a repulsive force. Now, positive, positive, force is going to be positive. Therefore, positive force means that it is repulsive. And then... If we have a positive and negative charge, then force F is negative. This is an attraction. If we have two of the same charges, F is positive, we interpret this as a repulsion. So basically, positive charge, positive charge F is repulsion, negative charge F is attraction. And also, we have to remember to calculate the distance center to center. If we have two objects like this that exerts forces on each other, the distance shouldn't be this. The distance should be this, from the center of the object. You can also see that over here, I have calculated from the center. Okay, this is not obviously directly in the center, but you get the point, which is that we should calculate it from the center. Finally, I want to link Coulomb's law and radial fields. So, at the first part of the video, we talked about how the electric field force is based, electric field strength, sorry, um, is force divided by positive unit charge. And we know that force, we now know this, is from Coulomb's law, 
is that q1, q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon r squared equals to 4. So if we substitute that in there, we have to divide it by how many charges there are. So imagine that this is the charge that is creating the field. Then we should look at the charges that are being affected by the field. The magnitude of this charge is this. So we're dividing this force by Q2. So we put Q2 down here, which basically cancels out and it gives us E is Q1 divided by 4 pi epsilon r squared. So what's very interesting about this is that it doesn't matter how big your, your charge is that lies in that field. It doesn't matter. The magnitude of it does not matter. What matters is how far you are away from this and also the magnitude of the the charge that is creating it so i made some notes here which is that electric field strength is not a constant despite the fact that you know this doesn't matter anymore it's still not a constant because it depends on r squared right e is also not a it's also a vector it's not a scalar because force is a vector quantity I think so that is about it for Coulomb's law and electric fields and whatnot. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, then do check out my channel for other videos on physics that could help you as well. Again, thank you.